I gotta find my yarn. I can't find it. This is a sad piece of yarn. Oh, hey, what's up, friend? Won't you join me for today? We are going to talk all about how to teach your students the food chain, food web, or ecosystem. What is it? We're gonna teach them all about the food web, but we're gonna do it in a way where it is all about cooperative learning. Comment and tell me, what, what junk do you have hiding in your teacher closet? What is cooperative learning? Here's a scoop. Cooperative learning isn't just beneficial, it's essential. It drives drives home science inquiry and technological principles instead of passive learning. Now students are going to be actively learning while doing cooperative learning, especially for our younger students. They learn all about the scientific method by asking questions, creating hypotheses, testing them, finding and forming a conclusion, but not only doing that, but doing it together with other peers. While doing cooperative learning, your students are going to be working on specific listening and speaking skills that are standards embedded within your ELA curriculum. Students who participate in cooperative learning activities perform and achieve more on their standardized tests than traditional teaching sit down, sit and spit methods. Not only that, but you know, I've included some reading and writing in there too, because why not? Cooperative learning doesn't just teach your students about the scientific method. It it helps them learn how to work as a team and it also improves their social skills, which let's face it, all of our kids are working on their social skills since the pandemic. So why wouldn't we do this? I'm going to share three games that you can play with your students that are cooperative learning for teaching your students about the food chain. I recently had a very old product in my TPT shop and I'm going to be really honest with you. Every time it sold, I would cringe because it was so ugly. I just redid the whole entire thing and you can get it right there in my TPT shop. The first game that I want to teach you about is called Paws and Predators. And oh my gosh, I love this game. You're going to play this game as a class. But before you get started, you're going to pick some people to be the paws, which are rabbits. And then the others are going to be predators. And those are your wolves. For this activity, you can do it either in a gym or outdoors. And you're going to need about 10 rubber bases or little spots to put on the ground. Now, you're only going to want to start by adding one to two students as the wolves. Everyone else is going to be the rabbit. When you lay the bases out, these bases are going to be their burrows. Here's the fun part. Rabbits can only stay on their homes for five seconds. If they stay longer than five seconds, they're out. Once they count to five, they must go find a new base or a new burrow and avoid getting tagged by the wolf. But here's the really fun part. If a student gets tagged by a wolf, they have to stand frozen in place with their legs spread apart. In order to get unfrozen, in, another bunny or rabbit has to crawl through their legs while also avoiding being caught by the wolf. As the game progresses, start removing some of the bases. This represents habitat loss. Another thing you can do instead of removing the bases, you can actually add more wolves. This represents having more predators than prey. Make sure you play several rounds of this so that students get and understand the concept of overpopulation and habitat loss. After the game, then you can ask questions and have a discussion about, well, what happened when there were a lot of burrows? What happened when we reduced the number? What happened when we only had one wolf? What happened when we had more than one wolf? How did this affect the game? From there, you can talk about how it relates to our natural world and what they can do to help conserve habitats and avoid overpopulation with animals. If you have students who experience generalized anxiety, what I would recommend is that you can have them as a referee to stand on the base and count to five just with their fingers. They don't have to say anything. You can also give them the option to pick whether or not they want to be a wolf or a predator. That way they're more comfortable with the game and feeling less 
explosive. Those are just a few options. Similarly, if you have students who experience depression, you can also ask them, give them a choice on what they would rather be, a wolf or a prey and give them the option to referee at a burrow, AKA base. Okay, this next game is also super fun. This one's called Roots and Resources. This is a class game, and you can play this one inside of your classroom, multi-purpose room, or another large room. So what you're gonna need for this are little yellow, green, and blue square. You can literally cut or just tear it apart. It doesn't have to be perfect, and they're just little squares. To save time on prep, you could even ask your students to help rip some paper apart. They might actually enjoy that. Once you have all your paper squares, you are going to space your students out around the classroom. The students' feet are going to be rooted on the ground. So that means that their feet cannot come up. Students may only use their hands to pick up the bits and pieces of paper around them. Students are going to try to collect as much as they can. Give them about two or three minutes for this collection. Once students have all their their paper, then the learning really starts to happen. Now you're going to let your students know what each square represents. You are going to say, students who do not have blue squares, please sit down. The blue represents water. Students don't sit down at their seat or anything else. They literally just sit in the spot that they were standing up in, and then they're going to scatter their resources around them. Students who do not have a green bits of paper, that represents the soil. Those students can also sit down and spread out their resources. Students who do not have yellow bits of paper are missing sunlight. Those students may also sit down and scatter their resources. The trees that are sitting down are decaying and providing nutrients for the other trees. So now the other students who are standing up are going to collect even more resources for their tree. This is important for understanding how water, the soil, and the sunlight provides energy to the tree so that it can provide for other plants and animals. Of course, I have reflection pages afterwards Words. What I recommend is giving your students some time to write about it independently and then sharing their answers and discussion after writing about it. If you have students who are reluctant to write about anything, then what I recommend you do is get them in a small group, talk about those questions together, and then write it down so that they can copy and write it on their own paper. For this next activity, this one is the Circle of Life web. Students will discover how everything living is connected and reliant on one another for survival. For this activity, your students are going to be sitting down. You're going to give them a card. The card can either be on a lanyard or it can literally just be cut out and held up. It doesn't have to be fancy. You are gonna start with the person who has the sun card. I gotta find my yarn. I can't find it. This is a sad piece of yarn. I would not be upset if my class used this. Like, let's just get rid of it at this point, okay? Why do I have this? So the sun's gonna start with the yarn. The sun is going to hold on to the tip of string. You're gonna think of this as kind of like, I have who has. So the sun is going to look for the producers. The producers are plants. For this habitat that we're doing, it's all ocean, which is super fun. I love the ocean. Who doesn't love the ocean? So we're gonna look for things like seagrass, seaweed, phytoplankton, coral algae, and kelp. So the sun's gonna pass to each one and they pass back to the sun. Next, the producers are going to look for the consumers. Your primary consumers or your herbivores, they are going to take from the producers. Then we're going to look at our secondary consumers. They are going to take from the primary consumers. These are animals like jellyfish, squid, shrimp, and sea stars. Then we're gonna look at our tertiary consumers. These are near the top, but they still are prey to just a few other animals. But these are the animals that eat those secondary ones, animals like octopus, dolphins, sea lions, and then you think, okay, what eats a sea lion? Those are those top predators, animals like the orca whale, a great white, and even humans. 
So once that yarn has gone all around, students see that it all started with the sun, but that it is all connected. From there, you can remove a primary consumer and see what happens. Who else would be left out? Now, with these cooperative learning activities, I also have vocabulary games, vocabulary cards. There's 15 vocabulary words to teach your students all about the ecosystem of vocab stuff. Because, you know, usually I find that science isn't hard to understand. What's hard to understand is learning the language because it's not something that we say every day. I mean, it's hard for me even right now filming this YouTube video to be able to speak the language of that. Because let me tell you something, my family did not talk about tertiary and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but I've also got some great picture book read aloud recommendations for you. I hope that you will give those activities a try. I'd love for you to check out this resource so you have your step-by-step -step instructions and guides. It's newly revised in my TPT shop. Hey, if you love learning about different learning activities like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would love to share more with you. Leave me a comment and tell me me which one of these games you would love to play. Thanks so much for being awesome. Get out there and put some steam in your set.